This is a quick video tutorial on how to search the library's entire collection of videos at once. While you can search each video database, such as Films on Demand, Academic Video Online, and Canopy separately, it is usually much quicker to use the OneSearch tool, which is on the library's homepage. Just a caveat, OneSearch will locate videos from any of our subscription databases, but it is not at all reliable for locating videos from free sources on the web. So for this example, I'm just going to search horses, or rather horse with an asterisk at the end. Just like searching for text sources, you can search using Boolean operators here. Here's our search results list. OneSearch searches almost everything in the library's collections, so the initial results list is going to be huge and full of things you don't want. We have over 7 million results here, and most of them aren't even videos. We're about to fix that. To get rid of everything except the videos, look in the menu on the left side of the search results list. In that left side menu, go to Source Types and click Show More to expand the list of source types. It pops up a window with all the source types arranged in order from Most Results for this search to Least Results for this search. Videos is down near the bottom. Put a check in the checkbox next to Videos. Then click the yellow Update button. So this reduces our 7 million search results down to 3,423, which is still a lot. But then again, we searched for a pretty broad topic. So normally this will have you down to a really manageable number. Of course, you could also narrow your search too. For example, let's narrow this search down by date. On the left side menu, there's a date range option that by default is set from the publication date of the earliest search result to the present. In this case, the earliest search result is 1898. That's unusual for videos. It's probably one of the first films ever recorded. Let's change that to something more recent. I'm going to change the beginning date to 2006 and leave the end date 2015. I'm also going to use the checkbox right above that to select full text. It's a funny word for it because we're dealing with videos, but basically it tries to remove the ones in the results list that we don't actually have the video available to view. Some of them are just listed, not actually available. This option doesn't get rid of all of them reliably, but it does get rid of most of them. Now you can see that narrowing the date range and selecting full text reduced our list of search results down to 381. Now let's look at how to view the videos you found. We'll check out the first one, which is Man and Horse. Notice that the icon says ebook. Ignore that. It's a video, and you can tell because there's a view video link in bold. When we clicked on the title, we got the item record. This is where you can find citation information for the video. When you want to see the video, this part is not at all intuitive. The thing you need to click is called Retrieve Catalog Item. This doesn't look promising, it just took you to the library's catalog, but look over on the right. Click View Video. It opens in a new window. And here it is. Incidentally, if you want to link to this video, the permalink information is at the bottom of this page. Let's look at a video from one of the library's other databases. We'll look at search result number 5, The Last Wild Horse. Here's the item record with the citation information that you'll need. Unfortunately, videos from this database don't have the link to access the video in the item record. You have to click back to the results list for that. Here it is, the bold blue text that says, Click here to access video. And it opens right up. The permalink for the video is right here on the page. I mentioned that OneSearch doesn't do a perfect job of removing the results that do not have the full video available to view. And here's an example. The Horses of Salt River is listed, but there is no link to view it. That's because we're not subscribed to that content. The redeeming feature of having content listed that we don't have access to is that now you know it exists so you can look for it in other libraries or online. 
but whenever you're looking for videos to use, it's a good idea to double check that we have access to the video and the full version of the video, not just the preview version. So that's how you can find videos in any of the library's video databases without having to search in each of them separately.